my channel where we're all about leveling up, elevating, and living our absolute best lives. So this is um, a long overdue <laughs> video that I'm doing today, but it pretty much is an update of my last update, which I did two years ago, um, February 2018, um, on my lip eczema status. So I felt like it was necessary because a lot, a lot, a lot of you have been reaching out to me via email, DMs, Instagram DMs, YouTube messages, um, someone even called me before and I felt like, you know what, maybe I wasn't as thorough and I haven't updated since on my condition so I figured let's just do a video. So pretty much I just kind of like went through with my comments, there were 500 comments so I just kind of found the top comments uh, or questions and um, I'm just going to go through and answer as many questions as I can um, and if I left anything out, we'll talk in these comments now um, if, and answer anything that you need to answer. Um, okay, so the type of lip eczema that I have is um, eczematous, like, I don't remember what it's called, but um, pretty much from my research back when I remember there being at least like two or three different types, but that's a specific type I personally have. So just because you have the symptoms doesn't necessarily mean you have the same one. The biggest question that I got, which obviously makes sense, is how long does it take for my lips to go back to normal? So from what I remember, my Symptoms began, I want to say like December or January of 2016 and then I didn't actually see a doctor until I think April or May or something. So I had it for quite some time um, and the big reason too is just because once you get a referral you do need to wait like a month before a specialist doctor does see you for some odd reason. It's just there's, I guess there's few, I don't know. Um, so this is in Canada. I have to remind you guys, in Canada this is how it is. Okay, so I had it for a few months, burning, itching, scratching, so many, like I just couldn't, like it was too much. Um, they were black, they were, it was just all the same symptoms from the same first video where it was the exact same thing. So after this, once I saw the doctor, I immediately got my medication, which in Canada has to be prescribed by a doctor because it's, yes, hydrocortisone cream is available over the counter, but the percentages are different. So you do have to keep that in mind. The percent, percent, <laughs> The percentage that I got at the time I think was like 3% or 2% um, or something like that. Whereas you can get like lesser percentages of the steroid if, if the steroid cream um, over the counter. I don't know if that stuff works. I personally haven't tried it, but for me specifically, that is what I knew I had to get. I know a lot of people were kind of confused because they're like, oh, I just I didn't need to get the prescription. I just got this over the counter. It really depends on your percentage. Maybe even mine was 10. I don't know. It was a higher percentage where I had to be through a doctor in Canada. Maybe the US is different. That's up to you guys to research and figure out with your dermatologist. Okay, so the meds that I use when I have a, a severe flare-up would be the hydro hydrocortisone cream. Once I got my prescription, it took about three weeks, two to three weeks for me to see a clear-up of a four-month buildup. So if you haven't seen a doctor for years, keep that in consideration of how long it's gonna take you to get better. If you saw a doctor immediately, then you'd get better a lot quicker. So you have to keep that into consideration and how your body reacts to, um, to meds. Like, everyone's different. So when people ask me like how long did it take for me to get better, for my personal situation, and I had a, I had it bad, like it wasn't so bad, it was like spreading around my mouth, but it was covering my whole lips. Um, it took me two to three weeks to get completely better. And when I say better, no color discoloration. So my lips went back to normal. I didn't have a rash anymore. I didn't feel a burning sensation. Like I was had sandpaper on both my lips. Like all of that went away. So my lips now were what my lips were when I got better after two to three weeks. So now in my current day, after four years of having this, uh, when I have, a, so my flare ups are different now. So I don't know if you can see, um, don't mind my lips are dry. Part of the problem with um, lip eczema, but if you guys can see this line here and here, it's sort of formulating. It's in the middle of my lip. So basically, and it's starting to tingle. That's when I know that a flare is coming. So it wasn't like this two days ago, although my lips were dark. Um, and I'm pretty sure my lips are dark from, um, what's it called? Dehydration. <laughs> However, I haven't uh, had a flare up. So I think that this time the darkness came first. 
of my lips and now the flare up is coming. So when my lips were really, really bad back in the day, like the first time I ever got it, this line started to move. So I don't remember if it was moving up or down. If you guys watched my video, I, did, I think I did specify. But the minute it got to one point or the other, that's when it started to get hard. It started to get extra dry, extra dark, it hurt. So usually when I got a flare up, I'm like, oh my God, I need my cream, I need my cream, I need my cream. So I wanted to update you guys on that because um, I just wanted to show you the the beginning stages of a flare-up it's not the same for everyone i do need to stress that because a lot of you guys ask questions and i'm like i can't answer because this is for me specifically um but uh it starts to even when i breathe in and out i can feel it on that line like it's like it feels kind of icy and it, it's it's just very uncomfortable and tingly sometimes i'll have like a spot or a little whatever I just use shea butter when it comes to that. I don't like medications. I prefer not to. The only reason I said this is because I know somebody or a few people have commented like, why would you tell people to take medication? It wasn't that bad. Maybe yours was so much better and you were really fortunate and you found natural remedies. That's great for you. But it was that bad for me that I personally had to take it. I'm just relaying my story to you guys. So for yourself, you have to use your judgment. Um, the reason I took so long is because I was trying natural remedies and it didn't work. So when I had a severe flare-up, I had to use the medication and that's what I do now. But when I have small ones, like I was saying, like maybe like a small little patch or something weird and I can feel a tingle, I'll just shea butter and shea butter and shea butter and Vaseline on top of that and then usually it'll just go away. Um, I haven't had that severe of a flare-up since that first time, thank God. <laughs> But I do know when I feel a sensation where it's like a line and I know that it's creeping up and up and up and up, that I use the cream because I do know that that's just gonna cover my whole lip and I don't wanna, I don't wanna go down that road. <laughs> so how often are my flare-ups now? My flare-ups are every few months, just like the other video, but even less than that. So like I wanna say maybe in 2019 I had two flare-ups and they weren't severe, they were minor. Like I was saying where I was like, okay, no, now I should take the medication. Like when I breathe, I felt a cool sensation. Like it was very, as though it had like one layer of lip. I could feel the line, the weird a squiggly line um, rising. I started to, that, that weird sensation with the, the, with the wind, with my, <laughs> with my breathing um, actually equates to uh, the tingling sensation. So I knew it was coming. So those ones, I had two of those. So in the summer, and I think just before I came to Uganda. So the, when it, it's that bad, then yeah. But those are my big ones, and then I maybe had like a few, like maybe two or three minor weird ones, or it's like a little speck here or speck there, and I would just shea butter it, and I'd get back to normal. And when I say specks, I mean like a little rash or weird sensation, but it was never um, like, full blown patch, like no, just, you could tell something was weird. Like I could always feel it, like I could feel it in my bones, I'm like, my lip is was back. <laughs> so what causes my flare ups? I have found that when I am stressed and dehydrated, and not just dehydrated, like I'm feeling thirsty today, now I got a flare up. As in like I've gone weeks and weeks and I'm just not taking care of myself, I'm stressed out, a lot is going on in my life, my body go, goes haywire, and that is usually around where I get lip eczema. So I know it's different for everybody. So I know that there's three different types of lip eczema, I just pulled it up. So um, usually it's an irritant, so you can like have um, your lip licking or like lipsticks or just your environment that you're around. Um, and then there's another one where it's allergies, so still lipsticks or something, or like something in your toothpaste or your medication that you're taking, something that you're just allergic to. And then the other one is just like a fungal infection, kind of like bacterial infection. Um, but you get it from like the licking your lips, so saliva, braces, that kind of diabetes or whatever. Usually when you're, you have these outward things, your body's telling you something, you're just not listening. Um, so that, that is me in my case. So stress and dehydration for sure. So what I recommend for taking any meds is definitely just Take a journal, I mean, you'll suffer for a little bit, but it, it'll pay off in the long run, trust me, because you'll, you'll understand what I mean in a few minutes. Take a journal and write down what's going on in your life, inwardly, outwardly, your environment, your diet, all those things. Do it for like a few days just to see that if there's been a shift so that when you're better, you can see the, and compare the difference. I didn't do this, but I now, because I've had it for so long, I've taken note, and I can tell, and I'm like, oh no, like, 
I'm not feeling good internally. I started just showing my outwardly. Like, we need to reel things in. We gotta figure things out. So, what I have to say next, for sure, which I should have said first, is I am not a doctor. I love answering your messages and everything, like, when you need help, but I'm not a doctor. I'm only sharing my personal experience, and I am not a natural path or anything like that, so I haven't even tried out all these other remedies that people are usually recommending, because mine cleared up. If it, was, if it continued to be so severe, and my flare-ups, every time I was getting them, were that severe like the first time, I probably would have put in a lot more work. Um, but generally speaking, um, literally talk to a doctor. My doctor knew nothing. She knew nothing about this. Like, she's an amazing doctor, but she just knew nothing about this. So she had to refer me to a dermatologist and a specialist who I told you guys about in my first video, and those are the people that can help you. If a dermatologist can't help you, get a second referral. Get a third referral. Get a fourth Keep going until you find one, because there are competent, amazing people out there who definitely know what this is. It's just not as common, so that's why it doesn't end up in a lot of doctor's laps. <laughs> okay, so my personal myth debunked of what people kept telling me, because I did see in the comments before, like, maybe it's this, maybe it's that. But now that I know what's causing mine, like, I'm, I'm very sure. So, it wasn't lip products. I threw out a lot of amazing lipsticks, thinking that that was a problem. It wasn't lip products, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, because I know this is because I can go months, months, months wearing, I have so many different lipsticks, I wear so many different colors, and that isn't what's causing my flares. If that were the case, I would have an allergic reaction at least every couple of weeks or something, right? But nothing. Um, another thing was coffee. The dermatologist who talked to me, she was like, it's coffee! And I'm like, I don't drink coffee. She's like, do you smoke? I'm like, no, I don't smoke. So I don't smoke and I don't drink coffee, or I don't drink coffee regularly anyway. Um, so that would have had to be debunked. So as I said before, um, it's definitely stress and dehydration. And the funny thing is, why I don't recommend meds is because it's a bad day. You don't actually know what's causing your problem. So what you're gonna do is end up taking this band-aid of medication and it's gonna cure the symptoms, but whatever's actually going happening is going to manifest into something else. Which now leads me to the next part of this video, my psoriasis. So last year, 2019, um, I started to get patches on my skin after I came back from Uganda. And I don't know like what was going on. At that time I didn't understand it, but I finally went to a doctor and because it was starting to spread everywhere. And my doctor was like, I don't know what this is, but like, I'll do a lab test. So I was like, cool. So she did a lab test and came back negative for I think she was doing like ringworm and all these other things. So negative for that, so she's like, I'm just gonna recommend you to a dermatologist. I didn't like the dermatologist she recommended me to. Um, he was just very, like the whole process was just really whack. But he was pretty much like looked at me and was like, you have psoriasis. And I just wasn't convinced. Like I Google psoriasis, I have friends with psoriasis, and the symptoms did not match. All I had is the patch patches on my skin and the weird like scaly skin, but that's it. I do want to show you guys that um, I've also been dealing with psoriasis, so I think they're both synonymous with the fact that I'm heavily dehydrated. I'm not drinking enough water at all. Um, so you can see the palm of my hand is, that's psoriasis. Like, my whole body is patches right there. Psoriasis, psoriasis, psoriasis. Everywhere you see dark, our patches of skin just wanting to peel off. That's psoriasis right in the middle there. So I can tell that my body is just dry. It's dry. I don't have itchiness. I don't have discomfort. I don't have um, so many other symptoms that people with psoriasis have. So with that being said, I haven't done much research on it because I'm just going to end up taking the medications that he told me to take. But generally speaking, I do know that the shift that happened since my eczema and getting that under control was getting really stressed out, like really, really stressed out time in my life. And why I can say this is because when I originally got eczema, the, or the lip eczema, the first time, at that time in my life was the most stressed out I have ever been in a very long time. I lost so much weight. You can see like my neck collarbone. I was just in such a depressed state. Like I wasn't depressed, I was just in a depressive state. Like I was so negative, I was so sad. I was just in such a horrible, horrible, horrible place in my life 
that, I mean, it was inevitable that something was gonna happen outwardly. So with the psoriasis thing going on, the only thing I can think of was stress. Like, everything else in my life was pretty happy about life was good, but there were just little things where I just was in, not in a great mental state all the time. Not, it doesn't mean everyone's always gonna be in a great mental state, but just, I was really, really stressed out with certain areas in my life. Um, and I think that played out. So I don't know why it's lasted a whole year, uh, because I feel like I've been doing better, but like I've had worse situations and areas of psoriasis that have disappeared. Um, right now, the worst area is my thigh, my left thigh, like behind it. But generally speaking, every like they like come and go and come and go and come and freaking go, but I just need them to go. <laughs> um, I know there's no cure for psoriasis, but um, I do know that I've been try as of 2020 now to be cautious to take my water like take three liters of water i'm really really trying with this quarantine it's helping a bit but like really trying to stay on top of that so that is that story about psoriasis so i think what happened is I, I need to learn to deal with my external environment to better my internal reaction so that externally i don't see what's going on inside of me, you know what I mean? So yeah, I know that might go above and beyond some people's heads, some people may not understand that, but that literally is how life works in the universe, so yeah. So basically the moral of this whole video is find out what is causing your lip eczema and solve it so that it doesn't manifest into other sicknesses. Medicine will not fully help you forever. Sure, it'll cure your symptoms in the moment, but like it'll manifest into some other area or problem or something and like, listen, we're trying to be out here glowing and dripping for summer 2020. I don't want to be out here with skin problems. And I don't think you guys do either. So, yeah. Take care of yourselves, guys. Internally and externally. But yeah, I hope this video was helpful. I hope I answered as much as I could. I mean that I did think of. Um, I love you guys so much. And remember to level up, elevate, and live your absolute best lives. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye, loves.